Hey folks, Ashley here, allthingsindustry.com, and I just want to talk about wedges. Um, totally, there's probably 70 million different types of wedges. I mean, where do you start? Um, <clears throat> this is the old, really old school. It's like toothpicks. Uh, they uh, have no anatomical design. They're straight, essentially a doorstop style of wedge. Then there's the anatomical, which is wood still, and uh, I've been I've used these for years. I mean, it doesn't mean they're good. They just, I don't know, that's always what I've had. <laughs> they're these really snazzy uh, plastic ones, which grip. Uh, they, well, they're called flexi wedges, but uh, they seem to work really well. And then there's another, I mean, there's another one I've used that actually, I wish I had the name of it. It's similar to this, it's clear, and it has a little square on the end where you can push instead of having to use hemostats or for, cotton forceps. So, what do we use wedges for? Well, a number of reasons. Uh, I guess I can only think of one. Essentially using when you're putting some sort of band or Toffelmeyer in there um, or a mate. How about a matrix? Um, this one is called an auto matrix. And we'll talk about that in another time. So we're going to place this around the tooth. And what I want to do is I want to prevent... There's two reasons why we use a wedge. I want to push, use the little bit of flexibility that's in flexibility, a little bit of, say, compression that's in the PDL to push the periodontal ligament to be able to push these teeth apart so that when I have put restorative material in there and the teeth come back, talking microns, we're going to have a nice contact. The other reason is, is that when I place my restorative material, I want to make sure that it doesn't go below uh, where my uh, preparation ends or gingivally. So let's try to weasel one of these in here. It's been a number of years since I've been, okay, since I put uh, bands on de deniform. <clears throat> All right, there we go. So we have our band in there and whatnot, our matrix. And then I'm going to select, usually use cotton pliers. These guys here, I wanted to use these, they suggest using uh, hemostats. So we're going to take this. Probably place it at an angle on your top, on your hemostats such that when you go intraorally, then you can put it in. I mean, there's no point in putting it straight like this, say for bat, for a posterior tooth, because there's there's a cheek here. So I would recommend putting it at a 90 degree angle or whatever kind of angle you think. And then we're gonna place it so that the uh, larger part of the base, or the base of the triangle is at the gingival, gingival, gingiva, and then just place it in. Definitely easier on a deniform, I'll tell you that much. Okay. And then, out we go. So what that's going to do, like I said, it's going to push your teeth apart a bit. It's not really very medical speak in any event. Push the teeth apart uh, to allow me to get, uh, to develop a nice contact, nice contour between the teeth. Prevent my restored material from going um, apically below where I want it to. And it also prevents this thing from flopping around. So imagine you have a tongue in here that's, that's like, always trying to move around because it's numb. This patient's tongue is numb and just wants to explore. So anyways, uh, that's the basics of uh, wedges. And we'll take that out. And that's that. Hope that helps. Cheers.